Welcome to Serving Locally with me, your host, Michelle Dinas, the podcast where we spotlight service in the Longmont and surrounding communities. All right, let's connect. Welcome to today's episode. We are here with the Reentry Initiative, and we'll just start out with introducing Emily. Hi, thank you for having us. I am the executive director of the Reentry Initiative. Um, we're located in Longmont, and we serve individuals that have been incarcerated or are cycling through our um, our criminal justice system. Um, so our mission is to provide comprehensive services inside and outside prison walls that empower adults to live fulfilling and crime-free lives in their community. And our vision is formerly incarcerated adults thriving in our community without reoffending. Mm. Um, we do serve the incarcerated, as I said, and returning citizens because we put passionately passionately believe no matter what mistakes people have made, they can prevent positively tra transform their lives, respecting their dignity and humanity in the process. So the reentry initiative offers a unique evidence-based process that combines the mental health and the substance abuse treatment with comprehensive support services to our individuals on probation or parole in St. Vrain Valley um, in the region of Boulder County. So our reach is pretty far. Um, and we also do our wraparound approach, um, ensuring that our justice-involved adults thrive in their community without reoffending. Yes, so my name is Katya, and I am a therapist and a program manager at the Reentry Initiative. And I manage, so our program is divided into, into two, per se, parts. So we have the kind of more case management side um, where we help folks with employment, education, find housing, that those kinds of things. Um, and then we have the, the therapy side. And so the therapy side is, um, is the program that I help manage. And we recently, in the last few years, really put the focus on making our um, therapeutic side of our program very holistic and mm -hmm. I'll get into more of what that means but meaning um, in a nutshell not just providing traditional um, individual therapy and group therapy but also providing some more um, non-traditional or complementary or I'll, yeah complementary I'll stick with that word um, uh, therapeutic experiences yeah awesome. we'll say more about that yeah, yeah. awesome so my name is Dominique Vodica, and I work on the wagey side, which is the work and gain education and employment services. Wa um, wagey? Wages. Okay. Yeah. And they're funded through the Department of Corrections. And um, I'm a peer support as well as program manager for that. Awesome. Um, can you give us just a little background about your organization? Absolutely. So our organization was founded in 2016 by uh, Deborah Simmons, and it was originally founded to serve women returning to the area from prison. Um, she began with what's called a cognitive behavioral group that she uh, put on two, two nights a week at Denver Women's Correctional Facility. And in that time frame in 2016 through about 2018, she interviewed over 100 women um, with only having 12 spots available for this um, intensive six months course, mm. preparing women to re-enter into our community. Um, of the 12 women selected, seven um, ended up successfully completing, of one of which is Dominique, oh. um, which is very important part of our story mm -hmm. because that's uh, Dominique's actually been with the organization a little bit longer than me because she um, really wanted to be part of this class inside and she took it um, to the nth degree as far as um, being able to maximize what she was learning in there and then apply it to her own reentry path. That's great. Um, so in 2018, that's when I actually ran into Deborah started talking and I joined the board and then shortly thereafter I became the executive director 
And my focus was, um, in the first two years, really assessing what Tri's impact was in Longmont. Um, and ultimately, how are we going to sustain our nonprofit um, to be a part of Longmont's community for years to come? Mm -hmm. So what happened at that same time, COVID hit. And we were forced, unfortunately, out of the prison, and we couldn't do our two two nights a week class anymore. Um, but we we realized, okay, we can pivot. This is a good good time for try to really expand and re refocus our um, services to maybe actually impact more people. So that's when we decided to take on um, serving all genders and doing a lot more post-release services within Longmont and Boulder County. Mm. Um, and that was definitely funded through what Dominique was talking about, the DOC program called Wages, really launched us into that arena. Um, and then the ultimate goal from there in the last four years is how do we become the one-stop shop in Boulder County where someone on probation or um, parole can go to one place um, not bounce around anymore to other organizations. Everything's taken care of under one roof. Um, and it actually reduces their need to retell their story, which can be very traumatic. Mm. And it streamlines their services because they have um, an amazing team of which we've built of um, a split even between our staff of staff with lived experience, meaning they've been through the system, and clinical skills, such as being a social worker. Um, and that's why I'm so proud of my staff, because each staff person has an asset um, that they bring to us, such as Dominique with her lived experience, having gone from inside and outside, she can explain the program really well. James is another peer of ours who we met on the post-release side. He's now another peer mentor focused on housing. Um, and then we have my clinical staff, which Katya holds many certifications in that holistic, out-of-the-box um, modalities that... Um, really we're pushing and is the new, we'll talk more about the evidence supporting that model. Um, and then we have Anita, who's our other director of clinical services at this point, and she holds the license addiction counseling certificate. So that helps us really um, make sure that we're doing the right types of treatment um, and not overdosing or underdosing members that are coming through our doors. And then we just hired on another therapist who actually is a social worker with lived experience within our system that we serve. Um, so that has been really uh, eye-opening for us having an actual therapist with the lived experience that's just going to make our program even more stronger and our members feel seen when they walk in the door um, because the people that's serving them are people that know exactly what they're going through that's powerful yes it's that's very that's incredible you guys <laughs> um fantastic what is your focus at the re-entry initiative oh this is we have um a really good answer to this. So our focus is providing wraparound holistic services to members um, who are returning into their communities. And what that looks like is um, we have the two centers that Katya was explaining. And the first one I'm going to introduce is our Welcome Back Center. Um, and that's, again, led by our two peers, Dominique and James, um, both who completed our post-release, um, and Dominique, who's been inside with us. We worked with, with her inside. Um, and what they do, is we call them care managers. And they're like case managers, but the reason we use the word care is because we truly do care yes. about what we're doing. Um, so our mem they help the members with basic needs, their linkages to housing and employment and, ed and further education, um, and also an array of life skills. So I'm going to let Dominique um, give us some examples of ways we've helped members walking in the door um, and what your day-to-day -day activities look like. Um, like I'd like to also say that like we provide a trusting place for our members to come um, when they find out that somebody works there that's had lived experience. They're a little more open and they're a little more like, oh, OK, you get it. And um, so like we have a lot of different members without naming names. Um, we help them find jobs and some of them are like they can't do it. And then, you know, just being a peer mentor and helping walk them through and coming up with different different scenarios we're able to like help them keep their jobs advance in their jobs get more skills for their jobs um, if there's any type of certification that will help them progress in their jobs we can help them get that um, we help with resumes we help anything but um, main pretty much day-to-day -day basis is helping them maintain and keep jobs and our education and maybe you can explain how now you're using your voice 
in different arenas in the field to um, affect change in the prison system in general. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, at one point I got to speak at the Capitol. Mm. They were talking about um, lessening the wages funds or maybe even not, not having them. And um, I was able to go and speak and tell how it changed my life and um, how important that it is because I've been in trouble for many years and it actually, to thrive, it takes support. When you have other people that are, you know, rooting you on, looking out for you, just you, anything, you just don't want to let them down or yourself down. And it actually is, it helps you stay on the right track. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I've got to speak at the Capitol. I've got to speak at different events. Um, I go into the women's prisons now and I get to speak. Um, I, I just, it's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. And then um, Katya is going to speak a little bit about our wellness center, um, again, which has three social workers, all with different assets um, that really create this holistic perspective. Um, so um, Katya is responsible for what we what she provides is the experiences, these amazing uh, classes and experiences in our community or at our office that have really impacted so many members in their healing process. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to let Katya talk about this theory of why we're bringing in these non-traditional mod modalities, how it ties back to SAMHSA's movement and recovery, um, and the importance of these out-of-box out ideas. Yeah, thank you, Emily. Thank you, Emily. Um, yeah, so I just wanna start by saying, I think our model of healing folks and and sort of the frame the lens that um as a society we've looked at folks who are re-entering or just in the in the justice system in general has been a kind of behavior change model right like we want the behaviors to change mm -hmm. and um i i I find that quite superficial and not enough. Yes. You know, um, what we really, I, I would venture to say for, you know, for myself, and I, I wonder if this is true for all of us, that what we really, really want is for folks to find that empowerment within themselves to step into their gift, which I believe every human has mm -hmm. that gift, right? And to then live that um, in a way ongoing, because when we when we know what that is and we step into that gift, we don't want to be going out and causing harm. Right. Um, and I truly believe that nobody wants to cause harm. So that's the, the kind of basis, you know, the spirit from which we, we build this therapy program. And, um, and so our work is very much a kind of, we take the long view, you know, we work with, um, with our members over a long period of time and we realize it's not a factory you know we can't just pump out healed people right. um you know it just doesn't work that way people take time they're on a journey and what they really need is a place to have their process and come back and even if they fall you know maybe they don't stay down for as long um, maybe their fall isn't quite so low um and and over time, you know, there's a kind of coming back to oneself and a strengthening that we see. And that's, I think, what keeps us going, you know, day to day is that we see our folks becoming stronger and stepping into themselves more. So this is this is just amazing and so gratifying. And, um, you know, Deborah Simmons, who founded the program, who founded the Reentry Initiative, she founded it because her son had um, he had his own struggles with addiction mm. and was able to receive top of the line help because they had the financial resource. Right. And what we see is so there's there's a thing called the the justice pyramid mm -hmm. in the justice system where at the top at the very top of the pyramid and it's a small amount of people because it's a pyramid right and at the very top we have those folks that can afford proper representation, right? To get a lawyer, to really do the proper work to find out what happened. And and that happens very few, to, with very few folks. At the bottom of the period, pyramid, we have most of the folks in the justice system who don't have money for ac adequate representation, right? Most, yeah. yeah, and- Most people, yeah. Most, <laughs> yeah. And they often will take a plea, so it's not actually, they're not really, justice isn't actually being served from that perspective. 
Um, and really, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of associations with poverty, mm -hmm. you know. And so um, these what I was really feeling when Emily invited me to come on to the the team was, OK, I've lived in Boulder County for 15 plus years and I have lived in a community where everyone here, you know, all my friends were on a healing path, trying to heal themselves from whatever, eating disorders, addictions, all the human things we deal with. And they had access to acupuncture, equine therapy, uh, dance therapy, art therapy, all these things that they received massive, tremendous benefit from. Yes. And then I looked across the street and I saw our brothers, sisters, siblings, who did not have access to any of these things, you know, they only had access maybe to the things that were covered by Medicaid, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. And so we are, our, our, you know, the spirit of it was let's get these services out, right? We have the power to get grants. Um, Emily's amazing at that. <laughs> and, you know, let's, let's, uh, let's create this movement. So that's what we've been doing. And now, you know, in the past two years, we've built a program where we have equine coaching, um, acupuncture, passes to the Long Mountain Rec Center for our members and their families. Um, we have also Qigong weekly, a, a Qigong class, which is like a um, an Eastern movement practice to balance the energy in the body. Um, we have song circles monthly, which is an amazing activity where we get together and we sing meaningful non-denominational songs, but just, just to bring back that kind of um, element of what it means to be human together. You know, that's something our, our ancestors did. Being together. Being together, singing, you know, connecting, mm -hmm. exactly just sharing from the heart. Um, we offer, we have a partnership with Dance to Be Free, which is a local nonprofit that works within the justice system to um, use cathartic dance practice um, and a garden program. We have an organic garden run by one of our members oh, who, cool. yeah, she's, you know, we've seen her go through her own healing process process amazing amazing healing process and um am i forgetting any offerings no i think no. you've covered most of them <laughs> and more to come and more to come we're constantly developing it and really you know all of these offerings are free to our members um and with that we also have regular community gatherings so we're having potlucks we just had a harvest potluck um and with all the organic veggies from our garden and it's it's just we our aim is to be a place where we offer not just the therapeutic services and teach over time folks how to care for themselves and live sustainable nourishing thriving lives mm -hmm. but it's also a place where there's community yes and we know from the research mm -hmm. that community and connection are the antidotes to addiction. It's just the research is unequivocal on that. Um, and so community is a, the central pillar, I would say, of our program, actually. And when it comes to SAMHSA, mm -hmm. um, the new, they just developed the kind of, um, the, the, the four dimensions of recovery. Um, and SAMHSA stands for... We can, yeah, we can put okay. that into the I notes. I was going to ask. So. Yeah, it's the mental health. It's like a mental health body that okay. oversees mental health in okay. the United States. So it's a very, very powerful, very um, authoritative body. And they've just um, indicated, you know, four dimensions of recovery. And those are home, health, community, and purpose. Mm. So really that, you know, we do tether our services to cover all those bases yeah that's fantastic wow can i piggyback off that absolutely so i think um just to reiterate when i first started um in 20 when i hooked up in the class in about 2018 um i i had been on parole for many years i'd not succeeded for many years probation community corrections you name it um it was more of like uh they were just it was more like it was about punishment instead of uh, rehabilitation and um, the first time i ever asked for help 
um, I didn't have money to go to, to any treatment or I didn't have that. They didn't know what to do. So they were like, okay, six months in jail or work release, whichever comes first. So in that, I lost my housing. I lost my kids had to go live with their, their my, my mother. And um, it was more brokenness, you know what I mean? And um, it wasn't a chance to heal. It was, a, it was more trauma. And so um, never was there any support systems, never was there any. It was just me on my own. So I, I always failed. But when I got with the reentry initiative, um, they actually set me up with a mentor. I had therapy. I had all kinds of community type stuff. So when I got out, it was a whole different experience. Um, I was actually even scared to go to the parole office because of my past, you know, <laughs> past stuff with them. But um, they went with me and um, it was like they're now more trauma informed. Um, the parole office out in Longmont area is awesome. Um, so it was a whole different experience. My mentor, she talked about building apartment complexes that would help people with backgrounds. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. She actually did it. And mm. that's something I'd never seen somebody fulfill something so great and so big, you know. So we work with them and they're now partners. But um, I had all these community type things, outlets to help me do better, you know. And so it just, it changed my whole life, like the exercise, you know, my therapist, she actually hired me after being my therapist, which I thought was crazy, but, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but um, to have a chance to actually be a part of it when I was in it is, is, is amazing. So I just wanted to say how it re really does work. It is about support and about community for sure. That's fantastic. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, who are you trying to reach with your organization? So this is a kind of a threefold question. Um, we're definitely trying to meet any, meet any and all members in our community that are cycling through the justice system. Um, so we take Medicaid and we're in the process of paneling with other insurance companies to make sure that we're capturing everybody and that they're getting services, whether they're funded through uh, insurances or even through our funding. Um, at no cost to our members. And again, our clients are called members. I don't know if we ever mentioned that, but that that philosophy behind that is, again, this is these are people coming back into our community. They are our members. They're not clients. They're not participants. Um, they're members. Um, the other people we want to reach right now is we're looking for housing and employment uh, connections. Uh, we have run into this, um, this theory that there's a lot of second chance employers and housing programs out there, um, but really there aren't, especially for our population, because it's not just that we're serving people that are homeless, we have that added extra um, area challenge around a background. And as um, Katya was explaining in the plea deal, um, part of the pyramid, a lot of our members are pleading to charges that may not even have anything to do with the actual event that caused them to get involved. Mm -hmm. So that's even a more of a bigger challenge for us because if they have a drug-related crime or a violent-related crime, um, that can really be a barrier to safe, affordable housing. So that's what we really want to reach now is people that really want to work with TRI, we will provide all the care management, the therapeutic support. We will meet with you every week if needed um, to check in on how our members are doing within your housing or, or employment placements. Um, and we really want to open up that communication because, again, somebody's uh, crime on paper does not define who they are as a person, but it is a huge barrier um, from the get-go when yeah. they walk out the door. Um, and then, of course, we want to connect with professionals in this field. We so much in the nonprofit world, we're vying for funding, we're competing against each other for the same dollars. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I don't want to do that mm -hmm. anymore. I want to partner with nonprofits in the field, go for larger grants together, work together, get out of our silos, um, because ultimately we need to create this network that's strong and can catch everybody in our safety nets. My, I resonate with that. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. What makes the work? Did you say try? Yes, we, we call ourselves try. Okay. <laughs> for short. Um, what makes the work of the reentry initiative different than other similar serving organizations? That's a great question. I think the, the main thing that differentiates us from others is our peer-led model 
um, coupled with our highly trained licensed social workers. Um, I take a long time to bring on new staff because I want to make sure the staff is representative of who we're serving, um, approachable and skilled mm -hmm. so that we can do effective, meaningful work. Um, and because of the diversity and the focus on that, I, I feel very strongly, and I'm sure Katya and Dominique will agree with me, that I've created a workplace culture that's transformational, not just for our members, but for our staff. Um, I believe that education is key to opening doors. So I'm, I'm always constantly um, giving them options to continue their own employment career exploration, um, I use their voice to inform me on all the program services and needs that we want to bring um, or, or focus on. Um, and it's really created an environment of healing, love, understanding, and connection. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I love my, I love coming to work. In fact, when I am have a day off or a, a vacation, I'm like still texting them like, what's going on? I want to know <laughs> what's happening. Um, and there's not a day at work at around 3 o'clock where the, the offices are buzzing with like laughter and just members shuffling in and out and they just feel at home with us. Um, so maybe I can let you two speak to also what differentiates us. I, I agree. Um, members, they feel comfortable with us. They, we, we go to activities with them. If they want to go to AA, we'll go with them. If they need support going anywhere, we will do it. Um, it's an environment where they can be open. They trust us. Um, they they don't. I guess. I guess one thing that I really like about um, is that if they do do something wrong, we don't run and tell parole officers. We'll help work them through it and give them the chance to talk to them themselves without you know going and telling on them or being that um, voice that they don't need right now. Because if they're going to get in trouble, honestly, they're going to do it on their own. Um, if it's something that will hurt somebody or anything like that, of course, we're mandated to tell. But um, they trust us, and um, we're able to communicate with parole officers um, for them or with them. So we're great advocates. Um, it's just, it's, it's awesome. Um, when I first started there, it's a place like you can go and like they're not only friends, coworkers, they're also become my family. Mm -hmm. So it's just um, and I, I know our members feel the same way. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, I um, completely agree with both what Emily and, and Dominique said. And um, I, I also just want to honor um, like all of the organizations out there that are doing, you know, reentry work and helping with, help, you know, helping with this work. I think it's, you know, we're all doing it. And um, what I think is really, truly uh, a breath of fresh air about the reentry initiative and what keeps me very excited and inspired about coming to work um, and that it's not just a job is that um, we are we're kind of, I would say, uh, looking always at the cutting edge of what what is healing people? What is really healing people? I think we're interested in that cutting edge research and we don't allow ourselves to get into a rut around, oh, let's just you know do these same old things because the fact is the same old things weren't working. No. They weren't. Right. And we, I think deep down, we know what heals. Mm -hmm. I think deep down, you know, the research is not sh now showing it, that community heals, that connection heals. And I think we, on a human level, we know in our hearts that, you know, trust heals, mm -hmm. um, care heals, a balance of accountability and grace heals. Mm -hmm. And so I think at Try, what really um, makes this, you know, a place that I feel uh, very strong and proud to come to every day um, is that we rest in those values and those are really our foundation, you know, and everything else uh, is built on that. That's ah, that's powerful, you guys. It is. What are your greatest needs? Another great question. Um, so we've actually started uh, changing a couple little things of where we want uh, people in our community to get involved. So one way we want is through gift cards. Um, members come out and they need uh, gift cards to go to grocery stores, restaurants, clothing stores, 
um, such as Target, Ross, Goodwill, Walmart. Um, some of these places like Home Goods, they need materials. And, w you know, while we try to provide everything at no cost, um, you know, for nice things, it costs. So mm -hmm. we're definitely looking for the community to provide us an array of different gift cards. So, again, our members also get choice in where they want to shop. I don't like to um, assume that what I would like is what they would like. Um, and then the other ways um, is at every group and class that we provide, we do a meal with those groups and classes. Our members are, are shuffling between appointments and work. They're tired. Um, we also focus because we're holistic on nutrition. So instead of giving them McDonald's gift cards, we want to teach them how to eat nutrition and eat healthy meals. So our volunteers, um, we have one in particular from De or one in Denver and one in Longmont who provide weekly home cooked meals with the ingredients on the top. Um, they're frozen. I pick them up, and we provide those at our groups, and our members love it. Mm. And it's you know things like chicken curry and casseroles, and um, with just the most amazing tastes. <laughs> so that's been really great. Um, and then. As well as, um, as everyone knows, usually around this time, Colorado Gives Day is mm -hmm. gearing up to take off. So again, tries doing another Colorado D Gives Day campaign. Um, it kicks off November 1st. And if you want to support the reentry initiative, you can donate through our campaign. We have a Colorado Gives Day um, link. Um, if you go to the Colorado Gives Day platform, you can find us by searching for the reentry initiative. Um, and, uh, and that can start November 1st. You can schedule it before actually December 10th, um, or you can plan to do it on December 10th. Great. Do you have any events coming up or volunteer opportunities? As I said before, our uh, volunteer opportunities are around making meals for our members, dropping off uh, gift cards as donations. Um, at times, there might be some things that come up with members, so just having um, some people available like get to give rides, maybe move some furniture around. Um, we also like our our community to bring experiences to try. So we rely on our community if you do things like art or dance or some of these Eastern philosophy um, like Qigong. Like the or, Qigong. Um, yeah. Or yoga, different types of Reiki. We we're looking for partners to come in and, and put these classes on for our members. Um, and what else do we need? And as well, oh, transportation, that's another big one. Um, bus passes can get costly every month and um, ticket books as well as uh, gas cards for members because gas can be pretty expensive. Yes, it can be. Stuff for employment might be important too. Yes. Like um, when I when I got out, I was, um, I have my light hairstylist license mm -hmm. licensed in nails so they helped me get all my cosmetology t tools to begin work because without those i wouldn't have been able to start work right. so any type of tools that are work related would be very helpful too yeah and the reason we ask for gift cards is a lot of our grants some of them are well not a lot but a couple of them are federal grants and so unfortunately they're they have um boundaries as far as how much we can provide for food or provide food mm -hmm. or gift cards to certain places that may sell alcohol. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that we have those available, even though a grant campaign can't, can't pay for it, we can give those out. How can people contact and find out more about the Reentry Initiative? Obviously, it'll be in the show notes. It's in my QR code, um, and I'll you know I post it. I'll share your guys' stuff on Facebook and Instagram as I see it. But um, yeah, you can find it there. But go ahead and just let them know how to find you. Yes. Um, so we are currently we are on Facebook, and we just started our Instagram account. Mm -hmm. So our Facebook, you just have to search for the Reentry Initiative. Instagram, it's called the Reentry Initiative Co for Colorado. Um, if you want a dose of sunshine and happiness, follow us. We would love you to uh, see what we're doing day to day. Um, we're also on LinkedIn, and that's where we post a lot of like events or things we need. So definitely check that out. We have our website. It's um, www.thereentryinitiative.org. Um, there's a way to contact us through there. If you click on the contact page, you can put in a general inquiry. Um, it's also there for people in the community that are seeking services, whether on probation or parole, just follow the prompts and the radio buttons, and you can put your referral in for yourself, mm. um, and we'll handle it from there. Um, and 
where else can they access us? Word of mouth is a big one. Did That's you say Facebook? Facebook, mm-hmm. Insta, okay. LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, all the good stuff. So, um, And we're super excited about our Instagram because we just went live on that. So please follow us. We need more followers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we'll do. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add to the conversation? Maybe that we skipped over briefly or that I missed completely or that you just feel passionate about talking about the floor is yours for a few minutes. I'll let them speak anything we missed. I'll just, I'll just add that, you know, an immense amount of human resource and beauty is um, to be found in the humans in our justice system. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing to me how much talent and um and beauty and inspiration and power is found it behind the prison you know bars mm-hmm. actually and and um yeah it's just it's inspiring to me to find ways to um you know, to, to open those resources up, you know, when folks do re-enter or when we do diversion work, like pro- working with probation, because these human beings are incredible. Mm-hmm. You know, they're incredible, and and they're so wise for what they have experienced when the healing, you know, is underway. And so, I just want to, you know, really highlight that destigmatization and um, embracing. Uh, our shared humanity is really, uh, I think there's a treasure in it for all of us to be found. Absolutely. And if I could piggyback on that, mm-hmm. just uh, to kind of wrap us up is, um, I, I don't know if people are aware of the or communities or the our state is aware of how much money is funded into the Department of Corrections every year. Mm-hmm. They have over a billion dollar budget. Um, And ultimately, our system is very broken and it needs some repair. Um, And we know it's going to take time. But what I'd like to spread to the community is reminding them that when you pass by a prison or a jail, there are human beings behind those walls, Um, some that probably don't deserve to be there and need access to services in a community that's going to welcome them back without that stigma. Um, And just remember that 90% of those that do end up in our justice system will be in our community. So, um, you know, there's always going to be the people that need to stay inside, but we can do something together to transform um, in the next 10 years what, you know, what is the purpose of jail and prisons? How do we keep community safety, safety at that forefront, but also look at rehabilitative methods to really help people while they're inside gain those skills um, to come outside because right now that's not happening in Colorado. There's a staff shortages. Um, they don't have enough uh, qualified people that are going in to provide the treatment when they're there. Uh, they can't get into classes. Dominique can explain to that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's fine and Danny, we're all out here doing great work. But it really, we do need to start focusing, how do we go inside before they get out? That's wasted time in my mind, um, that they could be utilizing their time down Mm -hmm. to um, really work on themselves. Because like Dominique had said, you know, she was self-motivated to want to do the work. Mm -hmm. And she advocated to get into those classes. So, Dom, maybe you can explain that. Yeah, when I was inside, I actually went, I was full force. Um, I completed the dog program, and I actually had a hard time finding a job. Um, a company here in Longmont, they offered me a job and everything. When they got my background check, they took it back. Mm-hmm. And I'm a good dog trainer. <laughs> yeah. I don't train my own dog, but I'm a good dog <laughs> trainer. I was doing service dogs and stuff. No, mm-hmm. she's a great dog. Um, but um, so that was that. That was very. Um, it was. It was almost like self defeating. It was really a, a setback. And Emily was my inspiration. You know, she's like, "No, we're gonna we're gonna figure this out. We're gonna get something." And um, I ended up getting great jobs, you know, um, but uh, inside, uh, especially private prisons, um, they wait to give you your GED till the end of your sentence, which mm-hmm. I think is ridiculous because if you have a 10 year sentence, you could get your GED right in the beginning and there's all kinds of training they offer. I got my cosmetology license. I got dog training license. I went to TC. I did try. TC. Explain TC. A therapeutic community. It's like an in-house um drug treatment, rehabilitation, behavior modification program. Mm. It's about a year long program. And um, getting into those classes can be hard. Um, You really have to to go in there and just fight fight for what you want. So I had everything lined up before I'd even complete a class. Um, 
but a lot of people don't know that or they're not strong and they don't know how to uh, voice have a voice for themselves um so waiting to like, have your GED towards the end is just crazy to me because there's so much because I think it's all the training that I got there that helped me and change my ways and develop habits and re you know what I mean? Give you purpose. Yeah. And so when I got out, it, it made my self-esteem, my everything a lot better. Um, so education inside is important and a lot of the education people there they have to do education part-time and then work in the units the other part of the time and they're not happy about it because they're there to help teach they're help they're there to help people change their lives and working in a unit being an officer isn't what they're mm -hmm. so i've heard officers talk about that mm -hmm. so they really need to um re if they have all this funding they need to use it for for better purposes i think mm -hmm. And that's how I hope Dominique and James will start to use their voice and we have opportunities to really explain, explain their perspective and their experience to um, impact that change. Yeah. And the parole office, they're actually, the Department of they're good about asking. They now um, have people who have been through the system come in and give ideas or give their opinion on stuff and I'm the biggest I'm like oh no 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 that's not working and other people I'm like where are you at you you were in prison you know it's not working why are you saying that mm -hmm. so it's not just about to appease them it's about to really make changes thank you guys so much for coming on the show today I learned a lot I it's I didn't really look into what you guys do but I figured it was you know something along these lines but your your passion and your heart for healing mm -hmm is so powerful mm -hmm. to me and and connection in the community that's that's where i'm at you know I, my my platform is serving others you know to strengthen communities mm -hmm. with purpose kindness and faith so like you guys are hitting it right on there so i am excited for the things that you guys are doing and that you will do in the future and thank you for everything that you do oh thank you for having us we so appreciate it absolutely thanks Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you to my guests, my listeners, and my supporters. Serving together, we can strengthen our community. Please like and subscribe. Do all those other things. You know you got to do them. Because that's the easiest way to, that you can serve right now. All right. Now go. Connect with others and be a blessing.